Hello everyone. In this section we'll be looking a little more at weight and weightlessness and what causes the sensation of each one. We can see a few people here experiencing a sensation of weightlessness, but this is in fact uh, well within the Earth's atmosphere in an aeroplane. So first, what is weight? Well, the weight is what we call the force due to gravity, right? Like all forces, it's a vector, not a scalar. Mass is a scalar because it doesn't have a direction, but force is always a vector, so it always has to point in a particular direction. The force can be found using F equals mg, or Fg equals uh, the law of universal gravitation. So the difference between uh, a mass and a weight is that mass is measured in kilograms and weight is measured in newtons because it's a force and it has a direction downwards. Now we only notice our weight if there's something pushing back on us. Okay? So that means uh, our weight has to be met by an opposing force. When we're standing on the ground, this opposing force is caused by the ground. Uh, so that's uh, due to Newton's third law of motion. For every force, there's an equal and opposite force, right? It means that if we push down on the ground with a force of uh, W, which is our weight, then it will push back up with an opposing force equal to W. Uh, so it's equal and opposite to the weight, uh, which means that we don't accelerate. If, it was, if the opposing force was not as great as the weight, we would sink down to the ground. If it was greater, we'd be propelled off it. Now when there is no opposing force, an object will fall. And this in fact has a special state or name in physics. The object is in free fall as long as gravity is the only, uh, only force acting on it. That means no opposing force from the ground, no air resistance, so you're not falling at terminal velocity. You're just accelerating due to gravity without any other forces acting. Like this fellow here as he slips up. So in this state, the body's weight has not disappeared, but it feels weightless because it can't feel any forces pushing back on it to show that it has weight, right? So objects orbiting the Earth happen to be in free fall, like the space shuttle over here, which as you can see, orbits very fast. They don't fall back toward the Earth because uh, their weight force is always perpendicular to their motion right? It's moving so fast that by the time it starts falling toward the Earth, it's actually moved across and so it curves around in a circle instead. So all the time the space shuttle is falling toward the Earth, but it's just moving so fast that it ends up going around the Earth before it can land. This means that uh, the gravitational force is acting like a centripetal force. It's never acting in the same direction as the uh, spaceship is moving and never moving in the opposite direction. It's always perpendicular, which means that we don't affect the speed, only the direction of the space shuttle's velocity. Uh, so what does weightlessness feel like? Well, if you've ever jumped or fallen, then you will have felt a slight sensation of weightlessness. Uh, another way we can think of it is uh, the sensation you get in an elevator when it suddenly starts dropping, or in this case, when the cable holding it up suddenly snaps. You accelerate at exactly the same rate as the lift, which means that relative to you, the lift doesn't seem to have any sort of you know, force of its own. And if you're accelerating at the same rate as the lift, it can't provide a force to push you upwards. There's no opposing force. Uh, bodies in orbit happen to always be weightless because there's never an opposing force there. If you're in a lift that suddenly starts descending uh, or suddenly stops moving upward, you'll feel a little lighter for a moment. This is due to uh, decreased weight. And if, it, if the lift were to stop fast enough, you would in fact feel weightless for a moment. In space, in a space shuttle, astronauts always have this sensation because they are always weightless. So the weight on another planet depends on the planet's properties. 
We have a different planet over here, Saturn, of course. Uh, FG equals GMM over R squared, as we know. So gravitational force depends on the mass of the planet, M2, and the radius of the planet, R. So uh, what's the gravitational force like on different planets? A planet with the same radius as the Earth, but more mass, will have stronger gravity at the surface. Right? Gravitational field is proportional to mass, so if radius is the same, something with more mass will have a greater uh, gravitational field, and so greater acceleration. A planet with the same mass but larger radius, so a planet that's a lot less dense, will have weaker gravity. Because in this case, M2 is the same, but the radius is increasing, so the gravity decreases. It means that the strongest gravitational fields come from bodies that are very, very small and very, very heavy. Uh, certain astronomical objects out there include uh, white dwarfs and neutron stars. These objects are very, very small, the size of a planet or smaller, but they have the mass of a star, which means that uh, they're very small bodies with a very large mass and they have very strong gravitational fields. In general, larger planets have a larger gravitational acceleration. But hang on, I hear you say, didn't you say that larger planets with the same mass would have less acceleration? Well, that's right, but they tend to not have the same mass. The volume of a planet increases with the cube of its radius, right? Because the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, right? As the radius uh, doubles, then the volume will increase by a factor of 8 because you're cubing that doubling effect. On the other hand, the gravitational force decreases with the square of the radius. So it means that if you increase by a certain radius, your gravity will increase about proportionally. So an object with twice the radius of the Earth, assuming it has the same density, will have an object twice the will have a gravitational field that gives twice the acceleration of the Earth. All right. So uh, that's the end of the uh, theory. We've learned about weight and weightlessness and weight on different planets. Let's go on to some questions. Astronauts in the space shuttle feel weightless because uh, we have a few options. There is no gravity in space. The Earth's gravitational field is very weak in space. The astronauts have less mass in space. Or the astronauts are falling at the same rate as the shuttle. So it turns out that the astronauts aren't completely weightless. They just feel weightless, uh, which is why it's uh, mentioned in the question here. This sensation of weightlessness means that even though you still have weight, you just don't notice it because there's no opposing force. So let's go through our options. There is no gravity in space. Completely wrong. There is gravity in space. Uh, it's what causes the planets to stay in orbit. It's what causes the space shuttle to stay in orbit around the Earth. B says the Earth's gravitational field is very weak in space. Now, while it is weaker than on the surface, it is not all that much weaker. At the altitude of the space shuttle, uh, the gravity is about 8.7 meters per second squared, which is pretty close to what we have on the surface. Of course, if we were going to Jupiter or something, then this would be closer to the correct answer. C, the astronauts have less mass in space. Doesn't work, conservation of mass. Zero mass would cause weightlessness, but only, uh, only uh, photons have uh, zero mass. You'll be learning about them later on. And so, because we can't change our mass, C can't be right. Our last option is D. The astronauts are falling at the same rate as the shuttle. This is, in fact, the correct answer. If you're falling at the same rate as an object you're inside, that means that there's no opposing force uh, to let you feel your own weight, which means that you have a sensation of weightlessness. Question 12. A stationary apple with a weight of 1 newton lies on the ground. What is the direction and magnitude of the opposing force? So we have a few options here. The opposing force is 1 or 2 newtons downward. The opposing force is a newton upward. Or there is no opposing force. So let's go through these. If there was no opposing force, then the total force would be 1 newton downward, and the object would sink through the ground. 
This is obviously not the case because the apple is stationary. Similarly, if the opposing force was 1 newton or 2 newtons downward, then this would add to the 1 newton of the weight and push it down to the ground. Our only option left is C, 1 newton upward, and this is the correct answer. If we add the 1 newton upward uh, of opposing force to the 1 newton downward of gravitational force, we end up with a stationary apple with no net force. Question 13. An object with a mass of 12 kilograms on Earth has a weight of 125.28 newtons on Saturn. Find the acceleration due to gravity on Saturn. So what equation do we use here? Well, the answer is F equals mg. But in this case, the g isn't the 9.8 we're used to. It's an unknown number that we're trying to find. So we can rearrange our equation. Now we can substitute the force due to gravity on Saturn and the mass of uh, the object itself. So now our equation looks something like this. And substituting in those values on a calculator, we can find that uh, the acceleration due to gravity is 10.44 meters per second squared. Don't forget units. Question 14. A spherical planet has a gravitational acceleration of g. Hooray, algebra. So the planet's radius doubles. How does its volume change? So uh, I hope you remember your formula for the volume of a sphere. The planet's new volume will be 4 thirds pi, and instead of r cubed, we'll have 2r cubed, because we've doubled the radius of the sphere. With me so far? If we expand that, then we have 4 thirds pi, 2 cubed, r cubed. Right? Now let's take that 2 cubed and move it uh, out to the front of the equation. Now we have 8 times 4 thirds pi r cubed. So this part of the expression, 4 thirds pi r cubed, is what the volume of the planet would be before we doubled its radius. So what's our new volume? Well, it's 8 times that. So its new volume is 8 times larger than its original volume. Alright, part B. If the planet's mass and volume increase in the same proportion, what is its new gravitational acceleration? Well, if our planet has 8 times as much volume, then it must have 8 times as much mass. So our new equation for gravitational force will be 8m1 instead of just m1, and it will be 2r instead of just r. Alright, so let's uh, work on this a bit. This will equal 8 over 4 gmm over r squared because we've squared the 2 and moved it out to the front and we've taken the 8 and moved it out to the front just because it looks nicer. Make sense? The mass of the planet has increased by a factor of 8. The radius has increased by a factor of 2. So once expanding, our new equation looks like this. Now what's 8 over 4? That's right, it's 2. Remember, this part of the equation is the original gravitational acceleration. So our new gravitational acceleration will be 2g. So we can see that when we double the radius, then we double the acceleration, assuming the mass increases in the same proportion as the volume. Question 15, last question of this section. The gravitational acceleration caused by a planet is proportional to that planet's mass, right? But Saturn is many times heavier than Earth and has a similar sort of gravitational acceleration. How can that be? So, our answer here is that although gravitational force does depend on mass, that's not the only thing it depends on. Gravitational acceleration is inversely proportional to the square of the planet's radius as well. Saturn's radius is much, much larger than Earth, plus the planet consists mostly of gas, so it's not significantly heavier than Earth. That means that uh, even though it is heavier, 
the radius of the planet is sufficiently large to reduce the gravitational acceleration. And it means that the gravitational acceleration right at the edge of Saturn is about uh, 10 and a half meters per second squared, as opposed to the 9.8 on Earth. Well, that's the end of the questions, and in fact, the end of the uh, lesson as well. So in this section, we've covered uh, how the universal law of gravitation applies to other planets, as well as the sensation of weight and the sensation of weightlessness and what causes these. Thank you.